purposely going slow on this, this Upanishad because I'm covering a lot of other Upanishads as I'm going along. And in the last couple of sessions, I have reviewed uh, the previous discussions to keep ourselves refreshed about our prior discussions. And I spent uh, a great deal of time uh, to emphasize a couple of things as we went along. And that was particularly pertaining to the, the meaning of Upanishad last time. Because uh, it is, as we discussed last time, asserted knowledge, which is free from any doubt, free from any vagueness, and free from any error, which allows us and leads us to a sense of limitless happiness and allows us to overcome the sense of inadequacy. It's an asserted knowledge that allows us to fully understand our true nature. Who am I? My kaun who? That's the asserted knowledge uh, is I exist. I'm eternal. Sat. I'm sentient. I have consciousness and awareness. I'm chid. And I'm full of limitless happiness. Anand. So Upanishads are basically attainment of what is already attained. Praptasya prapti. Unfortunately, most of us don't really realize it. They're always struggling to be something different than what we are. And studying together as a group is basically to remind ourselves as to who we are. Frank, uh, we talked about lots of stories over time. Story of the missing 10th man. The story of a lion cup where the Adult lion had to explain the little cup who really that little lion cub was, and told so many different stories to go along with it. And once you are able to understand it to the fullest extent, you're very comfortable with yourself. And as Prasanna all the time likes to say, dosh. So that is the purpose of learning together as a group what Upanishads are. And the word itself is talking about uh, the exact meaning. Our Sanskrit is language so straightforward. Every word has an important meaning and goes right directly to the subject. Over a period of time, we have studied a great deal about different kind of speech. Uh, and an ideal speech we learn must be very truthful and arising from the or foundational power center, Mula Dhara Chakra, be truthful, grounded on proper values. You acquire emotions through Manipuranaha Chakra, but it should be properly refined through the intellectual analysis at Adnya and Saraswatal Deto, and then delivered forcefully through the words that inspire others and create positive energy in the minds of the listeners to help everybody else. And that comes out through the Vishuddhi Chakra. We discussed, uh, we are gunatrayatitaha. What it means is, Sri Krishna said in the 14 chapters, Satvam rajastama iti gunaha prakriti sambhavaha. Nibadnanti Mahabaho Dehi Dehi Namovyam. Hey Arjuna, Sattva Rajasantamas, the qualities existing in Prakriti, bind as though the changeless indweller of the body, Atma, Dehinam, to the body. So basically, we talked about Sattva being a value of uh, brilliance, purity, Rajas being the active quality of longing and attachment activity, and tamas tend to be more delusive in activity, dullness, and can lead us to many mistakes. But again, when we are able to see, clearly see that there is no really agent or action other than gunas that are making us act, as Sri Krishna says in the 14th chapter, Nanyam gunebhya kartaram yada drashta anupashyati 
गुणेभ्यश्च परम वेति मत भावम सोधि गच्छति एंड सो बाय ट्रांसेंडिंग दी श्री गुणस गिविंग राइज टू द बॉडी व्हिच गिव राइज टू दिस बॉडी द एम्बॉडीड पर्सन इज लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम बर्थ डेथ ओल्ड एज पेन एटसेट्रा काजिंग इन संसार एंड अटेंस इमोर्टैलिटी इन द स्वेटी एट वर्स ही सेड गुणाते तान अतिच्य त्रीन देहि देह समुद्भवात जन्म मृत्यु जरा दुखैः विमुक्ते अमृतम अश्नुते सो दैट्स व्हाट वी हैव स्टडीड सो फार देन वी डिस्कस्ड द डिफरेंस अवस्थास दैट वी गो थ्रू वी आर अवेक अ टिपिकल स्टेट वी आर एंड एज यू वी डिस्कस आल्सो देहत्रयादिदा दैट मींस you have three different kinds of bodies sthula sharira sukshma sharira and karina sharira that means gross body the subtle body and causal body so when we are awake the typical state for most of us and we identify ourselves with the body and we confuse our body mind and intellect as our true nature and we interact in the object of world when we are sleeping and go in the dream state the subtle body takes over where called sukshma sharira it creates by its own imagination different sets of organs and have various dreams created in your subconscious mind where as i mentioned before the autonomic nervous system still reacts but when we wake up we realize that that was simply nothing else than dream itself and then when we are in deep sleep we are fast asleep we no longer dreaming or identity with the real vishwa world as we call it in the gross type interacting with the world around during the sushupti we call it only thing that is existing is the causal body the karana sharira but unfortunately we have a wheel of ignorance on top of it but nonetheless because of the presence of our true nature which is brahman karana sharira we are able to get recharge ourselves refreshed during the deep sleep and these are the avastha trayati taha we talked about and then giving a cross reference to you jagrat swapna sushupta di prapancham yat prakashate tad brahmaham iti nyatva sarva bandhaihi pramuchyate तद ब्रह्म अहम इति ज्ञातवा आई एम दैट ब्रह्मन व्हिच इलिमाइन्स द रेल्म्स ऑफ वेकिंग ड्रीम एंड डीप स्लीप एटसेट्रा नोइंग दिस ज्ञातवा वन इज रिलीज फ्रॉम ऑल द बॉन्डेजेस सर्व बंधई ही मुच्यते सो व्हाट आई मीन इज इट वंस यू आर एबल टू रिकॉग्नाइज आई एम दैट ब्रह्मन व्हिच इज द वन व्हिच इलिमाइन्स ऑल द थ्री डिफरेंट रेल्म्स ऑफ आवर एग्जिस्टेंस being awake dream state in the sub- subconscious mind and deep sleep when we are not dreaming or awake to the world by knowing that's our true nature tad brahma by knowing this one is released from all the bondages if i can go back again into the three different phases we talked about if the consciousness is in the deep sleep we sometimes raise a question how come we are not aware of the experience of ignorance and happiness in the deep sleep and like uh, that we observe in the dream state and what we are awake the reason for that is that when we are in deep sleep our mind and senses are not there and we are not aware of any particulars for that time we know we have general knowledge but we don't have a particular knowledge for example if divinity of brahman is compared with electricity electricity cannot 
exhibit itself without the other material things like electric bulb, wirings, and all those things. So that we need the external things like body in order to get all those functions going. So as related to Avastha Triyatita. We spent a lot of time discussing about the principle of Maya. And uh, as we have discussed in the past before, Maya is uh, simply a clear understanding that you're able to see the nagri that you have created in the mirror itself. And then finally, we come down to today's discussion from Kalatrayatita. Now, this is something you need to listen to it very carefully with intense concentration. The concept of times in terms of the past, present, and the future is the property of mind and does not exist outside that person, outside that person. Now, thought is always associated with time. It's against the time and space framework that every thought arises. Now, time is the mental awareness of the sequence of events based upon the memory. Both the memory of the past and the imagination of the future are events that occur in the present. And therefore, the past and future are now, at this moment. The division of time is purely a categorization by our own mind. Once the division of time is negated, time itself gets negated. Let's look at it this way. The present or now is itself is not different from I am or from our consciousness. Now present is not today since part of the today is gone drinking coffee and part of the today is yet to come. Present is this very moment and will disappear by the time I'm completing this sentence. So if we carefully analyze the present moment within ourselves, we'll recognize that it's not different from the conscious present I am, which itself is the worthful awareness, absolute, infinite existence, or Atman. Now, the moment you examine the present moment, it resolves in you because it's no more. Time being the property of the mind and an important component of the thought, there is no time and the silence of mind between the thoughts. That's exactly the reason why there is no understanding, apprehension, appreciation of time when you're asleep. When you're in deep meditative state, there's no awareness of passage of time as well. If the thoughts resolve in Atman or awareness during deep meditative state. The same thing is true when we are very happy and laughing loud and big and mind is completely resolved in its source and hence there is no time when our mind is filled with pure joy. So mind along with the categories of time and space arise in the Atman and also resolve in Atman. The Atman alone is a substratum and the reality of mind and its categories. Atman being same as Brahman and in this Upanishad, Ganpati being created Brahman, Ganpati, he also transcends all these three divisions of time, what we call past, present, and the future. So he is Gunatrayatita. And once we are able to understand our true nature, we too will reach that state of Gunatrayatita. Now, last time we touched briefly when we talked about different kind of watch, talking about coming from different centers. And basically, we'll go in a greater detail about all these spiritual or energy centers now. 
we have different energy centers in the body. You see, our body is made up of pancha mahabhutas, we know that. But the senses come from the Atman or Brahman, the divinity that enters the body. But as you know, those energy centers which uses mind, intellect, and functioning body centers, various plexuses are kept in different parts of the body. I'll talk both in spiritual sense and medical sense as well. See, last time we touched about Tvam Muladhara Stito Sinityam. The Muladhara Chakra is a center located at the very bottom of ourselves, at the tip of the coccyx, between the median brafe, between the anus and the genital area. I'm talking about medical description. The Swadhisthan Chakra is located in between the front of the pubic bones and the sacral plexus in the back. The Manipur Chakra is located in the umbilicus. Anahata Chakra is located near the heart. Vishuddhi is kept located at the level of, of the throat. The Atnya Chatra is located between the two eyebrows or between two eyes. And Sahasra or Sahasratala is on the top of the head. So these are the various seven energy centers we're talking about. Now every energy center has specific functions. And then I still remember uh, Gita, your uh, father, discussing with me in the old... Uh, temple in Polk Street, he would be asking me a question about Kshetra Kshetratni Yoga. So there he in the beginning says, Prakrutim Purusham Chaiva Kshetra Kshetrama Evacha Etad Veditum Vichani Jnanam Nyayam Chakesha. So basically Arjuna was asking in the beginning of the 13th chapter, please tell me about Kshetra and Kshetratni. So our human body is a powerhouse, but the mysterious power of the Lord reflects merely as an assemblage of flesh, bone, and bone blood. And here it is described here as Kshetra, from which all kinds of power arise. However, this power of Brahman is concentrated presence in specific parts of the body known as chakras. So these are the power, seven power centers we're talking about. I talked about Muladhar Chakra. For example, now for people who like mnemonic, uh, people who know Marathi, we used to call it Tana Pihini Paza. These are different colors. Tai Tamra, Naringi, Piwala, Hirwa, Nila, Parva, and Zamra. Or the colors from the other side was Vibjar, Violet, Indigo, Blue, Green, yellow, orange, and red, depending from the topping from the top of the head all the way to the Muladhara Chakra, which is red. But um, if you, uh, when I send you the notes, I'll send you Vibjar, V-I-B-G-Y-O-R, but these are basically colors. Again, the mantras are, for the bottom is Lam, for Swadishtan is Vam, for Manipur is Ram, for Anath is Sam, and for Vishuddhi is Ham and subsequently is Om. So these are the way going to the head. So these are various mantras. And again, all these centers are given various elements. Muladhara is Prithvi. Swadishtan is given Aap. Manipura the Bimbi at the level of the umbilicus Agni. At the level of the heart is Vayu. At the level of your throat is uh, space. Akash. And of course, at the Adnya and Sarsthal, basically is the Brahman between the eyes and Sarsthal. Basically, Om, Om, Om. Those are the centers that go. Now again, when you're talking about Muladhara Chakra, with that, we have a feeling of being well-grounded, well-contented. There is a sense of commitment and independence at Muladhara Chakra. With that center is strong, we are energetic, 
and we have tremendous vitality. We have strength and we, as yet, we are feeling a quietude and stillness. Kind of paradoxical. Strong, as yet quiet and stillness. These are some of the muladhar. For Swadishtan, basically, these are feelings of compassion, friendliness, intuitiveness, vitality, sense of belonging. And in Manipur, around the level of the umbilicus, you have the energy, intelligence, high productivity. Anaha chakra near the heart, there is a compassion, empathy, friendliness, optimism, increased motivation and outgoing nature. At the Vishuddhi, basically the increased creativity, expressivity, expressivity, the good commitment and skills and contentedness and good listening skills. And then there is a clear thinking, healthy imagination and strong intuition at Adnya and feeling of oneness and world as a community was Sudayvakrutam, the feeling at Sarsara. So these are some important values of various centers that we have in our body. And then we studied, we're going to study today are Tom Shakti Trayatmaka. And we talked about Maya Shakti Prasanna. And what we're referring to, if we remember, I had said about Dakshinamutri Totra, Vishwa Darpana Drishyamana Nagri Tulyam Nijantar Gatam Pashyan Atmani Mayaya Bahirova Adbutam Yathanidraya. The universe, like a city seen in a mirror, Vishwa, Darpana Drishyamana Nagri Tulyam. The universe is like a city seen in a mirror, is within myself, Nija Antargata. It is right within myself. But we see the world as though it's created outside and remains outside. And how do we see it? Pashyan Atmani Mayaya. We're able to see because of the power of Maya. Bahihi Ut Adbhutam Yathanidriya. The way we see during the dream state, that way we see it in the dream, the world phenomena being outside. So these are the Shakti we are talking about. And when we are talking about Shakti that is given by Brahman, it's called Icha Jnana Kriya Shakti, the infinite power is manifest in the human being as a threefold power. The power of desire, power to gain knowledge, and power to act, dicha, nyan, ashakti. And that is the reason why we need to emphasize, unfortunately, Johnny is not there to appreciate what I'm saying now, is all living entities, whether it be human beings like us, animals, birds, the trees, the bushes, all living entities have the same energy and express in different forms. Icha, Jnana Shakti. And those people who have understood that connection around, these are Nirmama and Nirahanka, realize that power that has been bestowed upon us does not belong to us, but has been given to us by a divinity, Brahman, then they recognize that they are not the doers and they are not the enjoyer. So that the Kartrutva and Bhoktrutva belongs to the Brahman who has bestowed upon us this energy, this sentience, and these energy centers in our body. And finally, I want to mention this and there will be a lot of questions I'm sure on these centers Tvam Yogino Dhyayanti Nitya on those poverty centers power centers to in that with that understanding Yogina Yogino Yonogina Yogino becomes Yogina Dhyayanti Nitya so those on that Brahman, the yogi, that means coming the words yuja, yuja means putting together, those who have mind and body together, they're able to connect with that 
and their mind is focused on that central area which gives us the energy in the deep meditative stage. So that's exactly what we do when we try to do deep meditation. As we go inside and go inside to What am I saying going inside? You're bringing your thoughts up from outside together, keeping your eyes closed but not asleep. With concentration, you're able to bring in our understanding towards as if into walking through the cave of your mind. At the bottom of the cave is located your Brahman, Atman, and going to meet that particular entity, you can need meditation. So that's what exactly what you're doing it. That is the consciousness you're connecting between your body, mind, intellect into the Brahman or Atman, which is located inside. And too much of concentrated stuff I had to discuss today. I'm going to stop at this stage and open up for questions or comments. Thank you. You know, meditation, the whole uh -huh. concept of meditation. As, as you say, there are people who do it for 20 years, a whole lifetime, etc. But what they're, the object of it, I mean, I've been doing it on and off. And, you know, I know on and off doesn't work. It has to be consistent. It has to be, mm -hmm. etc. But you still are trying to find that deep, you know, we say, oh, we're trying to connect with the Atman. So, but that's a very superficial thing to say when you're actually trying to get into the cave, the abyss, you could say, of that um, mind, you know, it is very difficult. And what are you trying to do? Is that when you get your self-realization, your moksha, in a sense? I mean, you should be advanced to begin with, right? To, to do that. You know, when you were a little baby, you didn't start running, did you? No. You barely tried to get up, sit up, and your mom was very happy the first time you took a few steps, mm -hmm. you fell down. And gradually, as you grew up and matured, you started walking, running, and got a control of the thing. So first thing is, um, this is not a meditation center, uh, meditation <laughs> process uh, discussion. I think uh, Arun can describe it or in the meditation session we discuss about it. But the principles will be is to, you have to find a proper place where it is peaceful, it's quiet, there's no disturbance. At least in the beginning, later on it doesn't matter. No sound, no noise, not even disturbance. Not even clock, which is being cluck, 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 cluck. Not no disturbance, no disturbance. Preferably do in the same place all the time so that your mind is conditioned like Paula's respect. When you go, when bell rings, your stomach starts secreting gastric juice, you're hungry. Then you sit in the same place. If you're comfortable, put on the incense. It doesn't bother you. Your father had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. yes, so yes. you put it only if you can tolerate it. And keep your eyes closed, but don't go to sleep. I like to freshen myself completely, showered and clean, like Kokonas of Brahman. Cannot do anything without taking a shower first fresh clothes, everything is pleasant, energetic, comfortable with yourself. Environment is peaceful. Disturbances are not there. So mind is more at peace at that particular time. Then you really want to do it. And that has to become a habit. The thing is, once I, one day I'll do it, you'll never will do it. So you have to do it regularly. You're not going to do it all the time consistently. So accepting being kind to yourself that you didn't succeed the first time, that's perfectly okay. But then, as you gradually progress, you amaze how much amount of energy you get every day. So what I would do is, all of us are retired, many of us are not retired. I think I think mother was joining from India. She is yet to work, I know. But the, you get it as a habit I like to do it in the morning. Without that, it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And in the car, I would always have the music or mantras playing so that by the time I went to the hospital, I was at peace of mind. 
So everybody has a different style of doing it. But I do the prayers that way. And then again, if you feel at the energy, but before you retire, you take a shower again. Freshen up, at least freshen up yourself. Sit in a quiet place and meditate. And you can gradually increase that thing. But as you do it, just imagine yourself. I don't know, somebody had shared it with me and I shared it with all our friends. As you're walking through the cave into the Lord Shiva's cave, mm -hmm. everything's kind of enclosed. But you know fully that the bottom of that cave is going to be Murti of Shiva Linga. To me, that's the way it feels like when I'm doing the med deep meditative state where, where I go inside and I'm at peace for that. And then you don't realize how this comes from Kalat Sayatita. You don't realize how the time flies. You see, so it's amazing how you have to do it. But the thing is, the key thing I can emphasize for you, Nainai, failure is normal. Challenges are absolutely normal. Don't give up. Keep on working. And preferably do it as a group, in a sense, if you're doing with Ram, that's good because one can push another. But towards the end, you have to be alone in your mind, connected and at peace. And the way you will find it, you'll be refreshed when you're done. I hope I, hope, I tried my best to confuse you. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you. What really amazes me uh -huh. is you take one line that uh -huh. you're beyond time or beyond gunas and expand on it for almost an hour. I'm simply stupefied. I mean, you go through so many other scriptures, uh -huh. references, and so the ideas become very clear. Good, I'm happy that. Yeah, it's a, it's a gift, a God-given gift. And no, I'm very, very good. happy to be part of it. No, thank you. No, I think that the thing is we are really, um, uh, everything, for example, when we drive on the car on the highway, on um, Prasanna, there's so many different things that are using as gifts. You don't realize it. So that when you're driving from point A to point B, it looks like you're just going driving. But there's so many different things that are coming to your mind from different directions. If they are not constantly keeping you alert to your destination, you have problems. So when you're discussing a topic, it's important to get cross references to make it more clear. That's the way I like to do it. So, Namaskar, Dr. Shane. I have some questions. <coughs> sure. Uh, this is Chandi. Uh, so, you are talking about seven energy centers and uh -huh. how do they relate to meditation? The meditation that you are explaining, it looks like is more evolved and more, uh, you know, when you are more used to meditation for a longer time. But when somebody is starting meditation, how do they use these energy centers to reach the, that level? You see, good question. All body parts are connected. You being a doctor, you know, I don't have to explain that to you. Uh, you start from the Muladhara Chakra, your foundational center where the energy is with, based upon the qualities or the value that you emphasize upon. But then you are concentrating when meditation, bring all other energy centers together and focus only between your eyes and on the top of the head, your cognitive centers. So I don't know if you read the medical articles, you'll see when we do the MRIs on these functional MRIs, we're able to see various alpha, beta, delta lines for the people who are meditating. They continue to increase or decrease depending upon the stage of meditation. And over a period of time, certain centers uh, are able, to, certain areas do get enlarged. So if you read the study from Stanford and Harvard, you'll find out that meditative centers do affect our nervous system in the areas. Now you having come from Northeast portion, Bhutan and Nepal area, you realize that many of the uh, Buddhist monks, 
when they pass away, their body skin color does not fade for quite few days. That is because of the changes that have been acquired by them in the deep meditative state. So basically what you're doing there is bringing your energy concentrated towards the top of the head and between your eyes and you are at peace. So these, remember even though I described them as seven centers, they're not separated by each other. They're all interconnected. When I talked about a powerful speech, remember it went from the very bottom to the top of the head. Then only you are able to be very effective about the speech is concerned. You see what I mean? So when you are meditating also, your values start at the very bottom, but meditative center being at the level of mind where you're controlling, it goes towards the head and the, between the eyes. Adnya and Saraswata. The thing is, only the way to do it, it doesn't matter how the car runs, as far as I'm concerned. For me, the most important is it runs. So what I'm trying to say is rather than trying to worry about the details as to how the meditation comes about, we follow the certain protocol and keep certain things non-disturbing to you and concentrate your mind, focus yourself but not stay, go to sleep, you'll be able to find out it will come. Okay? okay. Hey, what's all, any questions for you? Yeah, I was just um, wanted to know is deep state is the one which is like achieving the peace totally? Yes. Difference between deep state and deep meditative state is similar but little bit different. How come? When you are asleep in deep stage, Sodavasta, Sushupti Stiti, you are connected with the Brahman or Atman. But you're ignorant about it. You're fast asleep. When you are in deep meditative state, you're connected with Brahman or Atman, what you want to call it. But you are awake. You are alert. You're connected. So that's a major difference between getting connected with your divinity within Atman, Brahman. When you are awake, that's one which is most energizing as compared to getting in company of Atman or Brahman, we are fast asleep when you are totally ignorant as to what is happening. I hope I'm making it clear. Is that clear, Watson? It, so they are different. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, one is you are totally uh, unaware of it, but only thing that you see is the secondary effect of it. But when you get up in the morning, you feel refresh, recharge, re-energize, rejuvenated. Uh, but that's totally different than the rejuvenation that you get by being in deep meditative stage when you are awake and aware. Okay. You, you talked about uh, all the values that are attached to the chakras. Uh -huh. You know, are they qualitatively different, each tier going up until you reached reach the um, top of the head, whatever, I can't remember that chakra. No, no. Sasratala or Sasradalas so basically, depending on what you call it, on the top of the head, yeah. But you see, the, the important to remember is all of them are equally important. Uh, every one of them play different functions. So like a cricket team, I mean, they are different fielders in different places. To me, everybody is equally important because one loose chain, you lost the game. So. Okay. Got it. Well, I mean, in the meditation, there are many ways to do meditation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah, go ahead. And uh, the question earlier question was about you know chakra and you know how to use them. Yeah. So if they want to understand how it is used, so science of spirituality type of meditation. I mean, if you attend their meditation, mm -hmm. they are focusing only on one chakra, which is like Agna chakra. They are they are not. Uh, moving around and, uh, you know, from uh, root chakra up or anything. So they just focus on one chakra and uh, that's it. Then there is a Sahaj Yoga meditation where they are moving around on all the chakras. Mm -hmm. And 
examples are there in our YouTube videos because people have shown. So if sure. they want to just check it out, they can. Uh, there are multiple ways and multiple sources they have the information on that. Well, well said. I think use what you like, whatever fits you. So. Yes, yeah. Everyone has a different need, actually. <laughs> exactly. That's very true. Well said. Kaka, uh, uh, how long does that experience last? Like for uh, someone, like I cannot say, like someone who is like doing it for a long time. Like, well, it's, uh, the thing is that it comes in their behavior. Then it stays all the time. Okay. Because you become personality becomes quiet. Not that they cannot work full speed, but during the crisis, it becomes very quiet because that's what is needed at that time. So it's not that they cannot. Um, I mean, I remember uh, uh, as a chairman of the department uh, going outside and uh, criticizing somebody, one of the workers, uh, because they, they had not done the job and I had to tell them what to do. When I got back to my and started laughing, it was not me to act in such a way that you get the point across to the person working with you to make sure they get the point. But that is not your nature. That Your nature is being kind considered and caring and loving. So so you have to sometimes, you know, you basically remember, Amar, uh, we are playing different roles in life. We are actors on the stage. And like Panchadasi talks about, uh, there's only one light which creates the image on the screen where the, the dancers are dancing, the music is playing, the dancers are having various poses, the spectators in the uh, theater are enjoying the expressions and they're smiling and happy and whatnot. But the thing that allows us to see that is that one single light it allows us. And so you connect that we are the actors. So we are really on a stage, sometimes working, acting in the form of a king, sometimes working in the role of a beggar. But we are not, neither beggar nor the kings. We really are the Brahma in this particular body as Atman. So I don't know if I'm answering your questions or not. I would like to uh, second what Dr. Prasanna Kumar said that like we are really fortunate like to hear these things from you. So no, no. Uh, taking into this really deep inside. <laughs> I think it, the thing is, you know, it rains. I just people who care about it will collect it in the pot and use it for cooking later on, and other people let it go in the drain pipe, which is fine. Rains continue to rain, so it's a privilege to share with you. So that's thank you. Thank you very much.